And still, the undisputed champion of the world, Camposis. What's going on all? It's the aftermath. Thanks for tuning in, man. Um, if you're new, hit the red button. If you're not new, man, thanks for stopping in again. Um, before I start, grab a coffee, man. Grab a drink, you know. Grab something to drink on or, you know, just try to stay relaxed. I'm going to go through a few things. Obviously, I'm going to talk about Cambosis um, against Haney. You know, that is that is the aftermath. You know, that's the fight that's going to go ahead. Um, it was meant to be Loma. But um, I'm going to get into that. Also going to talk about, obviously, you know, um, Usyk and Joshua. Um but hey, thanks for tuning in once again, man. I've got my drink with me. Cheers to all of you, man. I've got myself a beer here. And um, enjoy the video. If you don't have your drink, don't have your coffee, pause the video, come back and watch it. Um, appreciate your time as always. So I was saying, um, Cambosis. Cambosis is going to fight Haney because um, Lomachenko is deciding to stay in the Ukraine. Now, in the Ukraine, they actually have a law there that from the age of 18 to 60, you're not allowed to leave the country, but because Loma and Usyk are from the Ukraine, they are allowing them or they've given them a chance, I should say, to leave the country because they are athletes and it's more of a public, a publicity move for them, you know, to give them a good name and things like that, you know. Um, so um, Usyk and Loma have both been offered that opportunity. Now, Loma was the mandatory for Cambosis, the WBO mandatory. A lot of people think that Cambosis has been duck in Haney. And that Haney deserves the shot. Yes, Haney does deserve the shot. But, you know, as I always say, if you're the mandatory, you can push for that fight, you know. And I believe that's what Lomachenko done. You know, Lomachenko is a very well-known fighter. You know, Lomachenko is a very um, well-known name. You know what I mean? A lot of Everyone knows who Lomachenko is. You know what I mean? So, I mean, he's got a good team behind him. And I believe they did push for that fight. And obviously, you know, um, Lomachenko decided to stay in the Ukraine because, you know, to defend his country and things like that, personal reasons. And Usyk has decided to go ahead with the fight. Now, um, at the moment, um, the fight... Is going to happen this year, but I'm going to get into that later. I'm first going to talk about Loma. But um, as I was saying, so Loma has decided to um, stay. Devin Haney gets the shot um, for June the 5th for the lightweight undisputed championship of the world, man. You know, and a lot of people believe that um, Campos isn't the undisputed champ, but he is. You know, he has all the belts. Um, Haney has the one strap, the WBC. Um, Cambrosis has the franchise championship. Um, and not only that, the president, Mauricio Solomon, has confirmed that Cambrosis is the undisputed champion. So, I mean, regardless of what people say, you know, this will put things in perspective, this fight. You know, whoever wins this will be the champion regardless anyway. So that fight's going ahead. Now, that's going to be a great fight. That's going to be happening on June the 5th. In Australian soil, um, huge fight for Australia, and I believe that it's going to be a, a good fight for both guys. Um, I think that Haney will definitely need to be um, on his A game because you know he's fighting in someone else's backyard. So, as you all know, Haney isn't really a knockout artist. So, I mean, Fighting in Cambosis turf, you know, he's probably already two rounds down. You know what I mean? That's just how things work sometimes. And Cambosis is looking to, you know, basically put on the performance of his life in his own country. 
And that fight's going to be going to be a great fight. You know, I can't wait for that fight. Um, it should be a close one, I believe. I think that Haney will definitely, like I said, you know, he has to do more than just win. He needs to win convincingly, you know. I know that he ain't going to get a knockout, that's for sure. You know, he's not that sort of dude. Cambosis has shown that he has a chin. You know, you saw what happened with the Lopez fight, you know. And not only that, he also has a punch. So, I mean... If Cambosis can knock down Haney, he's got a, a, good, a good chance. But um, it's going to be a good fight, man. I think that um, Haney has a great chance of winning. I think that Haney is a very good defensive fighter. I think that Haney is a very hungry fighter. You know, he's a guy that's trained with Ford Mayweather before. You know what I mean? And then we've got Cambosis that's trained with Manny Pacquiao. So, I mean, those two combinations on his own is going to make a great fight for sure. Without a doubt, you know, that's going to be an epic fight. And I can't wait for that fight. Now let's talk Joshua Usyk. Now Usyk, as I said, you know, he is coming back. Um, at the moment, Eddie Hearn has given Usyk's team contracts for a June fight. You know, but they're also... Looking at other interim fights for June. So Joshua was looking to fight in June regardless. Um, they've already looked at venues and things like that. But they're, they're really pushing for the Usyk fight for June. You know, that uh, I don't think that um, they want a warm-up fight. I think they want that Usyk fight as soon as possible. Now, Joshua has recently hired a guy by the name of or worked with, I should say, you know, I'm not sure about how I'll say he's worked with a guy by the name of James Ali. Now, James Ali is, um, is Usyk's, oh, one of Usyk's ex-trainers. He's also worked with um, Klitschko. Um, he's also worked with the great Emmanuel Stewart. So you know where I'm going, going to with this, you know, this is all about Joshua taking care of business. As I've always said, you know, he's, He's been there. He's been very serious about this fight. You know, I believe that they will possibly fight in June. You know, it's hard to turn down that sort of money. I understand there's a lot going on in the Ukraine, and I understand, you know, um, that Usyk, you know, is going through a tough time there. And I think that this fight may be something that he needs, you know, just to take a breather from it. You know, I believe that they will, they will allow him, you know, I don't know if he has, but I believe that they will allow him to take his family away with him, you know. So he's looking for a training camp at the moment. Um, he's definitely coming back, you know. He was actually contracted to fight in June. He's definitely um, obligated to fight um, this year. And, you know, they've said, you know, we're willing to give him that, that um, time, but they're, they're, they're definitely pushing him for June, you know, they're not wasting time here, you know, they've, they're giving him contracts, they're giving him deals, you know, and it's very possible that he could go ahead with the June deal, very possible, um, I don't see why not, you know. Now, if he goes ahead with this, um, you know, that will give him so three months training camp. We're in March now. March, April, May, June. Yep. About three months training camp. And who knows, you know, things may be better in the Ukraine. Um, but he will have to return to the Ukraine. You know, um that's just how it goes. But um unfortunately, you know, that's the rules, you know, they're allowing him to to compete and to fight. Um, as a publicity move, but um, who knows, you know, things may get better there, and, you know, he may be able to really help the Ukraine with the, with the big bag that he's about to make, this will definitely be Usyk's biggest paycheck, you know, um, but yeah man, two great fights um, happening around the corner, or maybe, you know, possibly Usyk could be the end of the year. 
Um, but Joshua is definitely fighting in June. Um, and, you know, this is great for boxing. I can't wait. You know, I can't wait for these fights. Um, let me know your take on it, man. Let me know what you think of the situation. Um, obviously, you know, I think that Lomachenko is a very brave man and, and, you know, I really do salute him and commend him for his bravery, you know, to to stay in his country when given the opportunity to leave because that's what it was, you know, it was an opportunity because you have to stay and it's hard not to stay, to be honest, you know, Ukraine's going through a very tough time but, you know, obviously family and things like that get in the picture and Sometimes you just need a break from that, you know. You never know what, what what's going to happen. You know, there's a lot of chaos that's happening around there. So, I mean, I really um, respect um, Lomachenko and Usyk, you know, both of them. But, you know, for Lomachenko to, to turn that down and say, you know what, man, I'm going to stay here as, as a true warrior, you know. Not, not, not only inside, but outside of the ring as well, you know. That shows... That he's a true warrior. And I'm not saying that Usyk isn't, you know. I'm just saying that um, that's very brave of him to do that. You know what I mean? Um, very brave. But yeah, man. Those two fights are great fights. Um, there is, obviously, man, Fury versus White coming up soon. It's basically one month away, and there hasn't really been much build up to it, you know. There hasn't really been much build up to that fight. Um, I hope that they do gloves are off with, or something like that. But um, I'm hoping to see more build up to that fight, man. Um, I'm going to continue on, you know. I, I hope that everyone is still here. And if you are, man, cheers to you. If you still got your drink, you know, finish it off with me, man. And, um, tune in, I appreciate your time, but, um, the heavyweight division at the moment, you know, um, when I talk, when I, when I think about the interim fight that Joshua could have, you know, um, at the moment, Ortiz and Wallin have given him, um, contracts, you know, they've, they've reached out and, you know, they've given him offers and, um, It seems that Joe Joyce and Joe Joseph Park is going to be fighting next. And it seems that, um, I've heard anyway that Andy Ruiz and Luis Ortiz are going to go ahead if Joshua doesn't fight Ortiz. I don't think that he would have fought Ortiz if Usyk decides to fight in summer. I think that Joshua will definitely fight Wallin. Because, you know, Wallin will obviously agree to anything that Joshua puts out there. And Wallin is, is available. You know, he's available to fight. He was meant to fight Dillian White. And it makes sense for that fight to happen, you know. Wallin also put on a great fight against Fury. You know, Wallin, in my eyes, beat Fury. You know, Fury was very lucky to get that one. Very lucky. So I think that if, um, if the Joshua fight doesn't go ahead with Usyk in June... I think that Joshua will definitely fight Wallen. Parker will fight Joyce. Ortiz will fight Ruiz. Now, those are all great fights there, you know. Um, I like those fights. The heavyweight division is back. Um, and um, I'm hoping to see Deontay Wilder as well step into the ring, you know. I think I think if he does come back, he will fight Hellenius for... for um, for Eliminator, you know, or possibly he might, he might even fight, um, what's his name, um, what's, what's the guy's name, Herkovic, you know, he might fight Herkovic, who knows, you know, I know that he will definitely go for Eliminator if he comes back, I mean, if Ruiz is tied up with Ortiz, I don't see Deontay waiting too long to come back, if he does decide to do so, you know. But he didn't, his team didn't reach out to Hearn at all for that fight, Joshua fight. I think that they knew that they were under 
contractual agreements with Usyk, you know. But who knows, you know, who knows? I'm not sure what the full story is. Um, but it's a shame that they didn't reach out, you know. That's the fight that I want to see. Joshua versus Wilder. You know, if the Usyk fight doesn't go ahead in June, you know, like I said, it's going ahead regardless. You know, Usyk has already, um, his team has already said that he is coming back. And um, we'll see that how that unfolds, you know. But Cambosis versus... Haney is official. I mean, the contract's there. Haney ain't going to turn that down for sure. This fight will definitely happen. Um, but, um, but yeah, man, there's a lot of things that I do want to talk about more, man. And um, I will actually talk about it. I want to talk about um, these, 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 these guys, um, Ortiz. Virgil Ortiz and um, Brutes Innes, you know, what everybody talks about these guys, you know, everyone talks about how great they are and they will beat him. The problem with these guys, right, is that they aren't loud enough, you know. I mean, Keith Thurman just had a fight against Barriers. We we, we, we were these guys, man. We were these guys, nowhere to be seen. You know what I mean? These guys should have been ringside calling out Thurman straight after the fight. You know, because these guys ain't going to get a shot anytime soon unless they make noise. You know what I mean? How did Ali get a shot so early? He made noise. How did, how did Mark Tyson get a shot so early? He made noise with his fists. You know what I mean? they got to make noise. And um, they're not making enough noise. To, to fight these top guys now Brutes Innes is fighting um soon I think he's fighting Clayton but um I'm hoping that um, um Ortiz is ringside and at least they can fight each other you know if they're not gonna fight the, the top guys at least fight each other um but at the moment you know they're, they're definitely shelved I, sh I should say you know they're on the shelf waiting um Tank Davis, another guy that's just fighting regular boxers, you know, not fighting top contenders. You know, these guys all have great potential. You know, these three guys that I'm talking about, Tank Davis, Brutes Innes, Virgil Ortiz, you know, all these three guys have great potential to be great fighters, you know, but they're just not making the right decisions. Tank needs to, to step up and say, you know what, man? It's time for me to take over. You know, it's time for me to speak up. It's time for me to say, chuck me in the deep end. I want to fight these guys, you know. It's easily it's easily done. You know, enough protection for Tank. You know, let's make the fights happen, man. I mean, how much money do you actually need? You know, what what's more important? Having, having a lot of money or having a great legacy? You know, money comes and goes. You know, um, legacies last forever. So, I mean... I'm hoping that these guys start making changes, man. And um, I wanted to just say, you know, thank you so much for um, for listening in, man. I've finished this drop off. Thank you so much for listening in. Thanks for your time. Please leave a comment, man. I appreciate the support. Like I said, if you're new, hit the red button. Salute to all the people that's been listening to the full video, man. I've seen a lot of people that's been watching the full thing, man. And I appreciate your time for sure, man. Salute to you. And um, I'll be back soon, man. You know, I'll definitely drop another video in the next couple of days or what, or whatever, man. Maybe a couple of days. Uh, maybe drop some music or something like that, you know. But thanks for tuning in, man. Thanks for your time. Um, leave a comment. Look forward to hearing back from you, man. Peace. God bless.